What's going on, everybody? We're back. Sooners Illustrated Podcast, episode 50. Nice round number, a little bit of a milestone there. On this Monday, January 15th, 2024, (laughs) Josh Calloway, James D. Jackson, Tom Green with you guys on a Monday. Not a ton to get to. We got some housekeeping things that we want to talk about on a Monday, on a snowy Monday. Tom, Florida man, how are you feeling about uh, the temps and the snow right now? Are you just out of your element completely? Where are you at? I mean, not not completely. I've experienced snow like a couple times when I was in Alabama. You live in Alabama. It's cold there. And and like I like I've been skiing, so like I've experienced like single digit weather. But it's you know it's different when you're out you're there being there. active, and as opposed to just like needing to bundle up and like letting the dogs out is like miserable right now. But they're enjoying it. Um, yeah. They're having some fun in the snow. Um, but yeah, man, just trying to stay warm. Nice dogs getting happy. I just came from Florida. Yeah, I, obviously playing the World Championships out there in Tampa Bay. Yeah, we came in third. Everybody is. It's rough. Lost to an NFL came player short. and his team. We we came up short. We should have won it, but it is what it is. We're <laughs> back to work. Let's get let's get it, man. Let's get it. Yeah, hopefully everybody's bundling up, dripping your faucets, all that good stuff. Because it is uh, a a good day to just be inside and uh, listen to us talk about some of your football and basketball a little bit uh, on a Monday. Because yeah, it is freezing out there right now. So huddle down, huddle down, uh, guys. Oklahoma officially hired Zach Alley. We'll talk about that in just a second. They made another transfer addition. Been a good stretch for them in the portal. We'll also look ahead. Is there more in the portal on the horizon? Maybe we'll, we'll look at that a tiny bit. And obviously recap the week that was for OU basketball. A couple of tough losses on the road. We'll recap that and uh, tell you if we're smashing the panic button or not for Porter Moser's team. But let's start with Zach Alley. So we talked about Zach Alley last Monday. Reportedly was going to be the guy. We thought it was going to be a little sooner than it was. It kind of just kept dragging out, waiting. When are they going to officially announce that? A lot of OU fans were very anxious. And what's the holdup? What's taking so long? Uh, I know, you know, obviously, you guys are very well aware. Our VIP members were asking us regularly, what's the hang up here? Yep. Eventually, finally, on Saturday, they announced it. Zach Alley, officially the co defensive coordinator and linebackers coach. Linebackers coach, not surprising. The co part, not. Super surprising, but also not totally expected. So he keeps that co-title along with Jay Valai and Top Bay. So I technically have three co-DCs now. You know, yeah. Zach Alley will, will be the guy. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, I mean, we talked about the hire last week, but just to kind of put a bow on it, your kind of final thoughts on, you know, Oklahoma bringing in Zach Alley officially and where do you kind of grade the hire? It seems like a good fit on paper, but, you know, time will tell, I guess. Yeah, I mean, first off with the timing of them announcing it. Um, so Friday – uh, Oklahoma had its Board of Regents meeting where yeah, pretty much every other assistant got it, uh, a raise, an extension, and they finalized Seth Luttrell's contract, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. But afterward, we spoke with Josie, and you know, he was asked about how the defensive coordinator search, so to speak, is c- coming along, even though we all knew that it was going to be Zach Alley. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he didn't say a whole lot, but you know, he went full uh, co- Cousin Eddie from uh, Christmas Vacation, you know, really good felt re- really good about it so kind of hinting that you know they were just finishing up the last little details there um i basically expected it to come down saturday right before the basketball game tipped off so that's basically when it happened um and as for the hire i i really like it um zach alley like we've mentioned before he's a guy that we had on our you know we'd mentioned right off the bat when they mm-hmm. parted ways with ted roof and this is a guy that, you know, we, we got a couple can quotes from him. You know, and he said everything that he's done in his career, every defense that he's tried to do has been to try to basically emulate Brent Venables because that's what he knows. You know, he came up, he, he spent eight years at Clemson as a student assistant and then as, as a GA. Seven of those were with Brent Venables, and he was basically attached to the hip with the guy. I mean, he, he knows how Brent teaches defenses. He knows how... Brent runs defenses. He knows his tendencies. He knows exactly what he wants. And obviously that's a pretty good mentor to have. Um, and then, you know, he went out on his own, branched out, got some experience, spent a couple of years at Boise State as a linebackers coach before Terry Bowden hired him at ULM. And Terry Bowden, obviously big fan of Brent Venables because he was a, you know, 60 something year old graduate assistant at Clemson for two years. One of those, he basically just shadowed Brent, learned from him and just had a great deal of respect for him. And when he got that ULM job, he's like, okay, who can I afford with ULM salary pool? Who is going to give me what Brent Venables can do? And he just gave the keys to the defense to Zach Alley. 
obviously he did a good job there, went over to Jacksonville State for two years and, you know, helped them transition to the FBS level. And, and you know, they were they were great this year. Obviously, you know, they're not playing the best competition week in and week out, but, you know, they still finished the season, I believe it was eighth in the country in stop rate, according to The Athletic, you know, which means they forced a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, I think on like 77%, 75% of the bonus possessions. So they, they were a really good defense. And, you know, Brent Venables brought in a guy who's going to do what he wants to do. He's brought in a guy he can trust. He brought in a guy who knows exactly what he wants out of this defense. And I think it's going to be a good move for them moving forward. I, I give it an A right now. I mean, that's the that's the main thing is is Brent Venom was getting a guy that thinks just like him. I mean, he trained him, he know he taught him everything he knows. I mean, so it's just it just makes the most sense. We said this on the last pod. That's what it came down to. And it was it was reassuring to hear Zach say that, you know, give that quote and, and pretty much say that's he's running it just like Venable's taught him. That's that's what he that's how he mm-hmm. runs it. And so all those tendencies, everything that we've seen, we know that Venables can now focus more on head coaching things. He he has a guy that he can trust, pretty much a second brain out there that just calls it out, he's gonna call it. <clears throat> And so that's it's, it's perfect. And then you talked about the titles. I mean, it's probably just about keeping your guys in Oklahoma. You don't want them to get poached off anywhere else because, you know, that once, once you start having some success, guys get to move on. And so give them a little raise, you know, keeps them around a little bit. I mean, it's got to be some thinking around that into why they have so many co-defensive, you know, coordinators and things like that. But Zach is going to be the guy that's, that's calling the plays and things like that. And they'll kind of all work off of him from, from there on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, like you said, don't get too hung up on the co co DC thing. I mean, the way I put it to you guys before we came on, and it's a little inside baseball, I guess. But after the game, we talked to the OC and the DC. We're going to be talking to Zach Uh he, He's going to be the guy running this defense. And um, you know, like I said last week, I love the hire. Um, short of hiring a guy who's been a major DC at a Power Five level and been really successful, this was probably the next best thing that you could do. You know, I'll, I'll say an A or A minus just to reserve that A plus for if you went and got. You know, somebody like that. But it's a great fit. Um, he seems like a perfect culture guy. The staff is on the younger side. We talked about that last week as well. That should help you, you would think, on the recruiting end of things. And um, feels like a rising star. And Oklahoma went and got him. So that's official. They brought him in. Um, fans don't have to sweat that out anymore. And the Zach Alley era will be underway. And excited to get to meet him eventually and see what his defense <laughs> looks like. It'll be exciting, uh, exciting times around here going to the next season. Like Tom said, he was at the Board of Regents on Friday. So since the hire wasn't asked till Saturday, we have no clue Allie's contract numbers yet. We'll have to wait on that until the next Board of Regents, which I think Tommy said was March. in March. Yeah. Um, but we did get the contract stuff for Latrell and the other assistants. Josie was there. He talked afterwards. Tom, you were there. So just if you want to just recap for fans that are tuning in that aren't really aware of what went on, what was the one or two things that stuck out uh, from BOR there on Friday that uh, you would want to pass along? Yeah, I mean, first let's start with Seth Luttrell. Um, you know, he's got a three-year deal, which is pretty standard um, for coordinators. Um, you know, he'll make one point one million this first year, and he'll have a hundred thousand dollar escalator each successive year, so three point six million for the duration of the deal. Um, and you know, every other assistant got a raise and a extension. Um, every other returning assistant, and you know, so far. Um, you know, they've, they've committed $6.7 million in salary pool to assistance, you know, just for, you know, reference last year, it was about $7.7 million. So we'll see where Zach Alley's contract comes in in terms of compensation, even if the salary pool is a little bit less for the whole staff this year, I still think it's very, uh, it's a positive sign that they're committing more money to the position coaches, you know, not necessarily the coordinators, because obviously Jeff Levy was one of the highest uh, paid assistance in college football last season, maybe yeah. one point million. Ted Roof was over a million as well. You know, so you're you're paying your coordinators a little bit less. You know, Seth Luttrell at one point one compared to one point nine. Zach Alley, we'll see where he falls in, but I imagine he might be just short of a million when when that comes out. Um, <clears throat> paying paying those guys less, but investing more in the rest of your staff. And these are all guys that have been around. Um, Every one of them got a, got a nice nice little raise, somewhere between you know fifty and one hundred fifty thousand dollars, depending on uh, who the assistant was. A um, couple new titles, you know, as we mentioned, Jay Vlai is now the assistant head coach of the defense, on top of being co defensive coordinator for the passing game, which is you know basically passing game coordinator, Todd Bates, run game coordinator. Um, you know, it, I think it just shows that this program is willing to be competitive within the mm-hmm. SEC, 
you know, I think last year you look at where their salary pool stacked up compared to the SEC. I think they would have been seventh or seventh or eighth, something like that. Still top ten in the Nash, in the country, um, but they're still going to be in that range. And again, committing more money to your, uh, you know, your your on field staff, not necessarily the coordinators, just helps with the continuity. Um, and Josie spoke about that afterwards. That it's huge that, especially on on defense, every one of those guys is coming back at, at the position spot. You know, outside of replacing the coordinators, everybody's coming back. Same with offense, everybody's coming back. You know, Emmett Jones is the newest addition there. He got a nice raise because he's obviously done a very good job both on the field and yeah. on the recruiting circuit. Um, so they feel really good about this staff. Brent is obviously thrilled with that defensive staff right now. Feels the chemistry is going to be really good with Zach Alley. And I think the other thing that was you know really noteworthy is you know these raises you know they they don't usually get done this time of year at oklahoma they usually get done you know toward the summer but you know joe harris president of the university said that you know him and joe c and brent all felt it was important to try to get this done for the staff at this time of year um, it's obviously a big vote of confidence in Brent Venables. And the other the other thing that's really worth noting is, you know, Joe Harris said, you know, Brent wanted to get this done for his assistants before he went to the table to talk about his own extension. And they're going to work on an extension, a new contract for him that's going to come some point down the road. But it's an investment in him. It's an investment mm -hmm. in the staff. And it's an investment in, you know, keeping Oklahoma competitive as it moves to the SEC. For sure. And that continuity, yeah, can't really be overstated. You know, the fact that, you know, this was going into year three of Venables and outside of a, a couple of spots, obviously Jeff Levy's moved on, you got new DC with Ted Roof gone, but all those position coaches pretty much are the same other than Emma Jones, uh, offensively and defensively. So that, that helps you on the recruiting trail, just all, everywhere, just to have that continuity and have that stability of you feel like you know who's going to be there and keeping that same train going. So yeah, that, that's good to see. And yeah, getting everybody the raises will help maintain that, kind of like what uh, James was referencing earlier. So we'll keep an eye on all the coaching staff stuff. We'll obviously, like I said, uh, be sure to let you guys know in March whenever we do get a hold of what Allie's contract looks like. But uh, there you have it for the coaching staff. It looks to be solidified for Oklahoma, barring any unforeseen changes um, going into year three under Brent Venables. Transfer Portal. Always got Transfer Portal stuff going on. Uh, it's a regular part of the show uh, at this point in the year. has been about a month and a half now. Oklahoma made another addition since last week's show. I talked about it on th uh, Thursday's episode with Colin that it seemed like things were trending in a positive direction, and they did land a commitment from Casey Thompson. Mm -hmm. This is a fun one, obviously. Um, Oklahoma kid, Oklahoma legacy, Texas, Nebraska, Florida Atlantic, and now Oklahoma on his fourth team in seven years of college football. <laughs> Perfect get, it seems, for some quarterback depth on this team. Where are you guys at as far as bringing Casey Thompson in here? It seems like a great fit all the way around for Oklahoma. I mean, how about that resume? I mean, I mean, playing for all the rivals seems like for, for OU. I mean, that's imagine saying that back in the day. Somebody's going to play all for all those schools in one career. I mean, that's crazy. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's a good pickup. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly curious about where he's going to be in the rotation. I mean, I know some are expecting him to be the backup. But, you know, you, you're bringing in Michael. You're bringing in uh, other guys as well, uh, was bringing in Z and things like that. So how's that rotation going to play it out? That's going to be one of the fun things to watch uh, as we get into spring ball and things like that. Who's going to be the backup? Who's going to be the third string? You know, how's it all going to play out? For OU, a guy like that that's very experienced, you know he can he can do it at this level. You know he can play at this level. And you yeah. got a guy like Michael Hawkins coming in, who's who's an electric talent, and one of those guys you really got to pay attention to as well. He's so young, but you know it's just who's going to be the guy. I mean that's, that's I mean in the backup spot. I mean it's going to be fun to watch because you know who the starter is. I mean that's that's not going to change. Um, but you know it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, it's cool for him that it comes full circle. Um, you know, gets to finish his career kind of where things started for. You know, not not him on the field necessarily, but you know, back in his home state where mm -hmm. his family you know played. But you know, I think this is a great move for Oklahoma. Again, from from a depth perspective, but this gives you. I, I think he'll be the backup. I think he'll go into the year in the backup. I mean, if, if one of the freshmen comes on and you know really shows that they're ready to be, you know, that guy behind Jackson Arnold, things can change. But I I expect Casey Thompson to go into this season as the number two quarterback because you know he gives you that experience that that room is lacking really. 
Um, yeah. you, know, you don't really have someone behind Jackson Arnold who's done it before, who's shown that they can manage a game and run an offense at this level. Um, and again, Jackson's going to be a first year starter. So bringing in a guy who, you know, how, how, how many games has he played in, in his, in his career? Like 35, something like that. You know, he's got, you know, 5,400 passing yards, 52 touchdowns, 24 interceptions. Um, he's, been there he's done that he's played in big games obviously at nebraska at texas you know if he can stay healthy he's obviously coming off that injury that you know ruined his one season at fau but mm-hmm. if he can stay healthy i'd expect him to be the backup guy someone that okay if jackson Arnold were to get hurt you know for whatever reason that they would have no hesitance to you know drop him in there for a quarter for a game whatever it's going to be i think this is a great insurance policy for oklahoma and just just bringing in his mind is is a big pickup. That's Thomas saying. I mean, that's that's pretty much what it is. I mean, you you look at Dak Prescott. I know we want to talk about the Cowboys for what they did last night. Look at <laughs> Dak Prescott and his one of his first years. And Tony Romo was the guy <clears throat> on the sidelines helping him out. That was one of Dak's one of his better years. Having a guy on the sideline that can help you out in those tough situations, while you still have the ability to, to play is at your highest level, you have another guy that's basically another coach to help you out. And I think. That kind of can be what this is. If, if Casey Thompson doesn't end up being the backup, he can still be a guy like that. And so it works out either way for OU bringing him in, you know, and it's just, it's just a big, it's just a big pickup, I think. Yeah. The rest of the, uh, to Tom's point, how many games he's played and started, the rest of the quarterback room won one start. And that was the Alamo Bowl with Jackson Arnold, obviously <laughs> Hawkins and Zerberg are freshmen. General Booty has never had any real playing time at this level, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's a great fit. Like I said on Thursday, in a pinch, Case Thompson can win you a game. He can win you yeah. a game. You know, a tie game in the third quarter, and Arnold gets hurt against South Carolina or something. Case Thompson can win you that game. Uh, we've seen him do it in big moments. Um, he did it against – played pretty darn well against OU in the Cotton Bowl, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, didn't play as well against OU a year ago when he's on Nebraska. But he can play. He has talent, and, you know, he's going to appreciate his opportunity. Very mature uh, guy, obviously, and – it's something that he's kind of probably always wanted to do, and his dad certainly, you know, is very excited about it. Um, it's a cool thing, and the opportunity for him to come. And this is another thing where NIL helps you. I mean, who knows what how this goes if NIL doesn't exist? But it shouldn't hurt OU's chances because I'm sure a big part of the pitch to Casey Thompson was, dude, you're going to make some serious money here uh, with your name and where your dad, who your dad is, one year here. Like that's a great way to close out your college career and send you off. Mm-hmm. And at some point this year. I mean, you, you, you're not banking on injuries, but there's a very good chance they will need Casey Thompson at some point this year. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, you feel a lot better about that than tossing a Michael Hawkins into the fire as a true freshman in the SEC. So it's a great get all the way around. It's great for both parties. So I'm, I'm excited to see whenever he does get out on that field for the first time. That'll be pretty fun. Uh, and I'm assuming, fun. yeah, I'm assuming that's, you know, getting the opportunity to redshirt Michael would be, you know, what they're trying to do as well. If they just Probably. so happen to not have him, yeah. So have have Casey yeah. Thompson come in and be the backup, as Tom's saying, and have Michael be able to red shirt and have another year because Jackson already has one year technically uh, out of the way. So this will be a second year, and the third year will be next year where he can enter the draft, and then Michael could come over and take the reins from there uh, with a fresh start. I guess you could say it. You could look at it like that. I mean, that that'd be a pretty good situation as well if all things work out for OU. Yeah, man. Who who would have thought that going into twenty twenty four? Oklahoma would have two former Texas players and a former Oklahoma State player <laughs> on its roster. This is crazy. This is crazy. Man, Wild man. times, man. Wild times. Maybe it'll become a norm now. That's crazy. How long until another player plays for Texas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma? Casey Thompson might be the answer yeah. to that trivia question yeah. for yeah. decades. Decades. <laughs> um, it really is unbelievable, but pretty, pretty, pretty cool that uh, he comes back home. He's played high school football in Oklahoma. It's cool. It's a cool story. And, Look forward to getting to talk to him at some point. He's a very mature guy, been around a long time. So he'll be a nice add uh, to the team. Yeah, I, I think he's only like five years younger than Zach Alley, <laughs> yeah. which is crazy. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise <laughs> that, that tracks. That tracks. Seventh year football, football, that tracks. Oh, and officially confirmed Zach Alley, 30 years old, as they announced yeah, nice. Nice. in the nice. press release. So, Good job. You're sleuthing. Oh, scav- the scavenger hunt's over. He's yeah, 30. Right. <laughs> As far as elsewhere in the portal, obviously it's winding down now at this point. Um, you, you're still keeping an eye on the Alabama roster. You've had some guys portal. You're keeping an eye on the Washington roster, the Arizona roster, where there's been all this turnover, coaching changes. We talked about Colin last week on Thursday. We're talking about Nick Saban. When a coach leaves, that team in particular has got 30 days. A portal window opens just for that team. So the yeah. same goes for Washington. The same goes for Arizona. 
<laughs> so the portal window is closed, but not for those teams. So keeping an eye on those rosters. If there's anybody there that Oklahoma could be interested in, obviously we're still waiting on a decision from Lance Hurd, the five-star offensive lineman from LSU. A lot of fans are kind of antsy on this too, and I know a lot of people on our VIP boards are just kind of, what, what's the deal here? Yeah, that's the main guy for them. That's there's the not a guy. lot. I think there's just not a lot. I think it's Oklahoma feels pretty good. Tennessee feels pretty good. Ole Miss is kind of lurking, hanging out there, but <laughs> otherwise just kind of waiting on a decision. So we'll let you know whenever he uh, makes it known. But that's a big uh, big fish still kind of just hanging out there uh, right now for Oklahoma. Uh, obviously, they didn't get Terrence Ferguson. He landed at Florida State, which was expected. Talked about that last week as well. Um, so still waiting on Lance Hurd, and I'll be sure on, with Colin on Thursday to either break down that decision or the lack thereof or you know where things stand, depending on uh, how we're looking at things on Thursday. So from transfer report, all that, finish up the show with a little bit of hoops. Hoops. Tough week for Oklahoma. Uh, 0-2 week at TCU at Kansas. We knew going in was going to be tough. Talked about that last Monday. Um, you know, they got the big win of Iowa State to start Big 12 play. Now, you're, you know, road games are going to be so hard to get. It, it really in college basketball period, but in the Big 12, it was a carnage week in college hoops. Tom and I were talking about that before we started recording. Top 10 teams were just falling like flies everywhere all week long in college basketball. And a lot of those, the vast majority of those, came on the road. It's been very, very tough to get road wins so far this college basketball season. <laughs> Oklahoma just didn't play real well against TCU. They gave it their best shot at the Fog, but you have to play, you pretty much have to play absolutely perfect to beat Kansas at the Fog. They didn't. So it's an 0 2 week. I guess the, the question, guys. Panic button? Not really. Just two road games. Where are you kind of at? Temperature check uh, for Oklahoma right now after their first, first tur- you know, real adversity. It had been so good until this week. Now you have a couple losses in a row. You got to bounce back now. Yeah, I mean, I- I'm not panicking if I'm Oklahoma. Obviously, they have some things they need to clean up. The turnovers on the road have been killer. Um, <clears throat> you know, they-, they haven't shot particularly well in those two games. Um, but again, these are two games that they weren't exactly favored to win either. And the Big 12 is tough. Winning on the road in the Big 12 is tough, as Houston will attest. I mean, Houston came into the week as the number two team in the country, the last remaining undefeated team, Mm -hmm. and they went out and lost back-to-back road games too. Um, You know, again, winning in the Big 12 is not easy, especially on the road. Oklahoma's going to have to, you know, find a way to steal a couple of these road wins at some point and handle business at home. But, I mean – Look, it was a rough week, not just for the top 10, but for ranked teams, period. You know, top 10 teams went 9 and 10 last week. Uh, top 25 teams were 2018 or 28 and 19 overall. 17 of those losses were on the road. I think 13 or 15 of those were against unranked teams. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, th- it was just a week of carnage across college basketball. So, I don't think there's too much for Oklahoma to worry about. Um, there are some good things that came from that week. I mean, uh, you know, low Susan, you know, just he's so finding a group right now, man. He's he's doing more than just being a distributor. Um, he's starting to find his shot some more. He's doing <laughs> rebounding, not turning the ball over. You know, JV on McCollum's still scoring. He's got to do a little bit better job valuing possessions because he had a handful of turnovers each of the last two games and those losses. And that's just something they can't afford on the road on the road right now in Big 12 play. But the schedule is a little bit more favorable, you know, for the next few weeks. I think they're going to be favored in seven of their next eight games, something like that. So they have a chance to really, you know, go on a run here, uh, you know, kind of create some cushion for themselves as they try to, you know, make their way back to March Madness. But I'm I'm not hitting the panic button, not, not yet. Yeah, I wouldn't hit the panic button to <clears throat> lose a, a, to a bad team or something like that. It, it, it's no reason. I mean, these are all, I mean, these are all pretty good games, pretty good teams to lose to. You, you still kind of learning. I mean, oh, this is OU's first year with this group. I mean, you're still learning what you can and can't do. In, in tough situations, which is why it's good they're getting this early and figuring things out. I mean, uh, come mm-hmm. March, it be, should be a lot different, a lot more polished. But I think, as, as you just tweeted, I think they went down to 15, right? 15, is that where they're at yeah. now? Yeah. So they dropped six spots yeah. to 15. I mean, that's still you're still top 15 in the nation. I mean, that's that's still pretty good, and that's with the two losses. So they, they got some things to figure out, but it's not a panic time yet or anything like that. You haven't lost any bad games. When you lose a bad game and – you see that there's, you know, bad body language on the court and everything like that. Then it's like, okay, let's panic. Let's something needs to change here pretty quick. But other than that, I think stay the course. Yeah, and and just to speak to how difficult the Big Twelve is this year, I saw you know Fran Fraschella at ESPN tweeted out yeah. this morning that of the you know 
top 16 teams in remaining strength of schedule, all 14 Big 12 teams are in. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. it, you're basically getting an NCAA tournament type game every night. Um, it's nuts. So it's nuts. Oklahoma will be battle tested this season. Um, they have a lot of hard tests coming up, but again, I think they have a chance to, you know, kind of, you know, regroup here and string together some wins. We'll see how it goes. They'll be back at home on Wednesday against West Virginia. Um, have a chance to kind of settle back in and rebound. Yeah, I'm not pressing the panic button either. Um, their three losses are to North Carolina and Charlotte, top ten team, uh, Kansas and Lawrence, which no OU team has won there in, in literally thirty years. Uh, another top 10 team. And then TCU and Fort Worth. And that TCU team should have beat Kansas and Lawrence. Uh, you guys saw the end of that game, I'm sure. Bit of a controversial finish. And then they just did beat Houston uh, in Fort Worth. I mean, three really good teams. And two of them are elite blue blood. You know, So I'm not there yet either. Um, my only question now, and if you guys remember, I that was back in December. They got this great start. My question then was, how will this team respond whenever they inevitably lose a couple Big 12 games in a row? Because it's just going to happen. The conference is too good. Here we are. Um, does the team bounce back? They play West Virginia, like Tom said, on Wednesday. That's probably the only team in the Big 12 that I would say is legitimately bad. Okay, they stink. Um, you're at home. It goes without saying. You have to win that game. You have to. The conference is way too tough. You have to win that game. So bounce back. Play well with West Virginia. Win fairly comfortably. I'm not expecting to blow them out. But win you know, soundly. And you get things right back on track. Now you go, you play shaky, you look nervous or whatever. You play tight. You know, you're not the same. because You've lost a couple games in a row. That's really my only big question hanging out there. So look forward to seeing how they bounce back. Um, a lot of it's going to be on the bench. The bench. Um, you know, against Iowa State, Latre Darthur had those big threes. Rivaldo Suarez was everywhere, getting big rebounds. Those The, the bench guys just didn't really give them anything in Fort Worth or in Lawrence, um, especially in Lawrence. They need those guys. You can't. It can't all be Uzan, you know, Owa and McCollum just trying to carry you uh, with the bigs doing their thing. You need those guys to contribute a little bit, and they, they didn't really in those road games. So get those guys back on track. Uh, I'm very curious to see the Kansas rematch in Norman here in about a, it's about a month from now. It's middle of February at the LNC. I'll be curious to see the rematch because you know Oklahoma did some nice things. They were in that game for a long time despite the bench giving them nothing and, and the foul trouble and all that. So we'll see. I'm curious to see when they play again. And um, Big week, though. West Virginia at home and then at Cincinnati on Saturday. As far as the Big 12 goes, that that's as manageable as it's going to get. So finding a way to try and steal a road win is going to be big. And look forward to seeing how they do. So not smash the panic button yet. We'll see where they go from there. Uh, James, as far as the women's team goes, split the week. So 3-1 and one at Big 12 play now. Uh, yep. They lost that yep. Kansas State game. That's a really good team on the road. But they bounced back. They blew out Texas Tech at home. And now they actually have the whole week off, which is weird. I had to, like, double-check that. What's the deal here? They have the whole week off. They don't play until Saturday they, at Houston on Saturday. But, hey, 3-1 and one in Big 12 play. Try to keep it going as best you can. They're doing a nice job so far in conference action of uh, getting getting, uh, getting some momentum going. Yes, it's a good start, like we said. I mean, they, they played sure. the three newcomers and, and got, a, got a good – a uh, batch of games against them, but we knew Kent State was going to be tough. I mean, that's they were number eleven coming in. It was a pretty good team, so uh, that's not that's not a bad loss as we talked about with the men's side. That's a, that's, that's a, one of the best teams in the country, so nothing to panic about there. Anything like that. Texas Tech getting twenty nine assists, uh, I think, was one of the records. I need to go back and check the stats. I mean, that's that's a pretty good sign that your team is gelling at this point in time, where everybody mm -hmm. can pass the ball around like that and create open shots just off of each other, and so that's pretty good. So. Um, good. It's a good time to have that week off. You know, you, you come off of that game and you, you get to think about what you did in that game and have the week and then come back Saturday ready to go against a tough team here. Absolutely. Getting get some momentum. Yeah, get some momentum and confidence and, and all that stuff. But they're kind of picking it back up after that, like we yeah. talked about before, kind of ugly end of non-conference play. But kind of getting it back rolling a little bit like we saw early, uh, you know, in the season. I think that's it. Nice, short, concise show on a Monday. We'll be back on Thursday. I think it could be Friday. I got some other things this week, uh, high school basketball obligations. So keep an eye out. It could be Thursday or Friday. Going to maybe move that around with Colin. Uh, we'll figure that out later. But we'll be back later to talk more about the portal and all the else that's going on with Oklahoma on the recruiting side of things. Obviously, with CK and all the latest team news that happens between now and then. Tom and I will be at the Noble Center on Wednesday for Oklahoma and West Virginia. Be sure to tune in uh, to that and get lots of coverage coming out of Norman on Wednesday night. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys on uh, Thursday, and then you guys next week probably sometime. All right, enjoy the snow.
<laughs> Enjoy. Stay warm out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stay warm. That's it. We'll see you guys back here Thursday or maybe Friday next time on the Sooners Illustrated podcast. See you.